Since the armed forces are simply waving people through on arrivals into the UK, are our country's borders less secure when they're being manned by members of the armed forces? No, first of all, that claim is just pure propaganda put out by the unions. That's not the case. I've witnessed it today. Uh, and I'm the former security minister, so I know exactly how the borders work. So uh, I think that's just uh, used, using you know, propaganda to try and uh, muddy the water. The simple reality is our borders are safe and secure. Uh, you know, these uh, individuals, the members of the armed forces that have come to help out uh, where, when the strikes are on, uh, are carrying out a very straightforward function and, of course, backed up by computer systems and scans uh, that are now, allow us to identify people of worry coming into the country. Looking behind you, Minister, we can see there is a queue there that is it's moving quite effectively. If that is the case, does that mean that our armed forces are simply more efficient than border force staff? Well, well first of all, you know, if you came ten minutes later, there were no queues at all. This is because two flights have arrived at the same time. Uh, I've been here for over an hour and seen uh, queues rapidly decrease. Uh, I think it's pretty efficient, especially here in Terminal 2 at Manchester, which is a, a brand new facility, effectively. Uh, no, look, I, I think what it demonstrates is the armed forces are managing to substitute for striking workers on the point of entry into the UK. Uh, they're using that technology, I said, to make sure that it is run efficiently and cleanly through the system. Uh, and uh, passengers are getting the service that they expect uh, from Manchester Airport. And I think overall uh, we're not seeing any disruption here to people's travel. Uh, I think that's a good thing. And I think it also shows that ultimately you know, the government's responsibility is to secure the border, but also to make sure people Sorry. can come, about, come and go about their business uh, unhindered. Should the UK be introducing travel restrictions on people flying in from China following the announcement from the US last night? Well, I think the government has said it's now going to keep that under review and, and review whether different countries with COVID outbreaks, etc., should, should obviously face uh, different restrictions. I think as we, as we speak, that is being reviewed, uh, and uh, I'll expect to see uh, some clarification, I think, by the Department of Transport probably today or tomorrow. If that is indeed the decision we've seen in the last hour or so, that India will now be COVID testing from several countries from Asia, if that is the decision that we aren't going to be doing so, how can we be sure that isn't going to put too much pressure on an already overloaded NHS? Well, I think first and foremost, that's a, that's a matter, certainly the Department of Transport, to work out the balance between the medical advice that it receives and indeed the, the, the flow of traffic. But, you know, there are, there are hundreds of countries who are not seeking currently to do that. Uh, and I think it's very important at this time of year, uh, what we do is we make sure that those countries that don't have COVID uh, can travel freely to the United Kingdom and vice versa. There are thousands of British tourists right now who will be flying back to the UK. Uh, and then, of course, making sure we target whatever restrictions we do where there are places of greater concern, not just with COVID. We do that already with other medical conditions uh, that, that if, that if uh, pandemics break somewhere else, then, of course, those are powers we have. But at the moment, I think we keep it under review. We, we look at the traffic and where people are coming from into this country, and then no doubt the Department of Transport will make their views known.